Hey, what's up? This is Cody the Coin Raptor, and welcome to my channel. I will be covering the latest and greatest crypto information, content, and news, as well as chart TA. So let's go ahead and get started here with the Bitcoin chart. So Bitcoin has been sideways for the most part since our last video yesterday. Now, Again, this a very important support up here at about 21,700 or so. That is a support to beat. If you think that this uptrend can continue, it needs to bust through the support. And if it doesn't, if it makes another attempt like this and bounces off, you're going to look at a double top, and a double top is very bearish. So what we're looking for here is a continuation of this trend, this short upper trend. Now... I'll tell you right now, what caused this little spike today is largely because of the fact that the NASDAQ was green today and the Bitcoin tends to follow the NASDAQ. So thus, Bitcoin was also up. In addition, there was a high number of options contracts that were expired yesterday, and a lot of them were puts. Okay, puts. So they're betting against Bitcoin. So what does that mean for Bitcoin? That means increased volatility. And I'll show you guys what that's also going to mean for tomorrow. I have that, um, the, the number of contracts that are going to expire tomorrow as well. So let me show you that. I am on Durabit Metrics, and this shows you the open interest buy strike price. So um, for those of you who don't know, open interest is going to be the number of options and futures contracts that are currently open okay and this shows you by the current strike price so what they're going to do is when you when you have a contract that you open up you select a strike price and that strike price is essentially what you're saying is i want bitcoin to go to this number this strike price and you're betting either that it's going to hit um, above where it currently is or below depending on the strike price now puts are like shorts and calls are like going long. So people who put in puts are very bearish. People who go put in calls are very bullish. So what we have here is we have a huge, huge amount of open interest. You take a look at this bottom left here. You can see that compared to the other days here in June, this is at tomorrow, the 24th, is the largest amount of open interest a number of puts and calls that are expiring. So what that means is that when puts and calls expire, the person who bought the put or the call has to make a decision about whether they're going to close it or whether they're going to buy shares or, or sell shares potentially. So depending on what it is, uh, they can they can buy or, sh or sell shares uh, on options. It gives them the option to buy or sell uh, depending on if it's a put or, or if it's a call. So what that means for us is in plain English, that tomorrow I expect that we're going to have a very volatile day in Bitcoin because, the, again, the puts and the calls together, the open interest, are massive, massive. Just look at the way it dwarfs all these other days um, that we can see here. So I expect it's going to be very volatile. Whether it's going to be to the upside or the downside, I think is going to depend entirely on what the, what the stock market does, what the NASDAQ does. If the NASDAQ is up and it's green, I can expect a large push to the upside. If it comes down and it's extremely red, then I can expect that it will create tremendous selling pressure. And you have all these puts and calls that are um, expiring. And so what that means is the people... Uh, the calls could get trapped and and then be uh, forced to sell at a loss, at a great loss. Uh, or, alternatively, you can have the puts, which are basically shorts, they would have to buy to cover, and what that would mean is that they would be buying, this, buying Bitcoin, essentially. So, all you need to know about this is that I expect to see a very large spike in volatility. So, Bitcoin's going to move either very high or very low, depending upon the market and what the market does. All right, so let's talk about ETH. ETH, we have here following, again, mostly the same thing as Bitcoin. We have a series of, of higher lows, higher lows, higher lows. It's looking uh, very nice. It, like I said, if this was, if we were looking for a, a trend reversal, this would be the start of a trend reversal where you have a series of higher lows, higher lows, higher lows. However, I'm not going to call this a trend reversal because... Not enough time has passed. I need to see multiple days, multiple days, many, many, many days of green uh, upward trend 
and green price action. So uh, right now, I am not buying, I am not selling, I am just waiting to see how this all pans out. And so ETH needs to reclaim this $1,200, needs to push above this level in order to regain and start a bullish trend. That's what I'm looking for right now. And remember, ETH tends to follow Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin goes up, ETH is going to go up. If Bitcoin goes down, ETH is going to go down. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and talk about our news. First, we have very important news here, for especially for Coinbase users. So Coinbase is going to shut down the Coinbase Pro service, and they're going to merge it in as part of their regular service okay so what that means is they are going to get rid of coinbase pro which is something that i personally use and then they are going to transfer those features onto the regular coinbase app now they're the good thing about this is they're going to be transferring the same transaction fees so coinbase pro had much lower transaction fees and the new coinbase service will also have the same fees so according to the announcement advanced trade which is what they're calling it will provide the same volume based fees as coinbase pro okay which range from a zero to 0.6 percent all right so yesterday we talked about how we expected that binance us is going to reduce their fees to zero hopefully we see coinbase do something like that very similarly that would be very good for retail investors next also a Coinbase, another very important point about what they're doing here at Coinbase, they're adding support for on-chain Polygon and Solana transactions. This is huge, okay? Especially for stable coins, for things like USDC. The biggest problem with USDC is that when you buy it, you have to spend a ridiculous amount of money in gas fees because Ethereum is expensive and Ethereum gas fees are expensive. The cost of using Ethereum is driving users towards cheaper overlay systems or alternative network. It can cost over $10 in gas or transaction fees to send small amount of crypto from the, crypt the Coinbase exchange to a self-custodial wallet, okay? And so when you buy USDC right now on Coinbase, you're going to be paying those incredibly high Ethereum fees. Now what you can do is you can buy it on Matic, you can buy it on Matic and save a ton of money on these trading fees. Additionally, you can also buy it on the Solana blockchain. And Solana transaction fees are pennies. So this is great news for anybody who wants to buy stablecoins. Uh, USDC, excellent, excellent information, excellent news. And I've saved the best for last. Solana Labs is building a Web3 mobile phone. That's right. They are taking Web3 technology to mobile phones. All right. So the backers of the Solana blockchain say the device will cost around $1,000 and be available for delivery in early 2023. All right. So this is fantastic information. Even if you don't like Solana, that's fine. But this can lay a, a blueprint for other blockchains to do something similar and put their own hardware out there. All right. This upcoming device, uh, which is an OSOM handset with a specialty crypto wallet functions and the Solana Mobile Stack SMS software development kit for Web3 programs, was announced at Thursday, an event in New York. It'll cost about $1,000 and be available for delivery in 2023. Okay. So what that means is it's going to feature a Web3 decentralized app store, integrated Solana Pay, and, and will facilitate code based, uh, QR code based on-chain payments, a mobile wallet adapter, and a seed vault that will store private keys deep within the recesses of the phone. All right. The only problem I can see with this is that if it has this information on it and it gets stolen, um, hopefully the thieves won't be able to take that information uh, off the seed vault. Hopefully that won't be the case. Uh, and that your private keys won't be put at risk. Uh, we'll have to see how that develops. But I will keep you informed as more information becomes available. I am incredibly bullish on this. This is fantastic information. I would love to see other crypto devices come out of other blockchains as well. This is Cody the Coin Raptor. If you like my content, please subscribe or give me a follow. I would also appreciate comments as well. Please let me know what you want me to cover. This is Cody the Coin Raptor signing out.